Right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar session. Um, today, we are going to discuss the introduction to WHO Equipment Inventory and Gap Analysis Tool. Um, this session is interpreted in French, and to listen to the French voiceover, please click on the globe um, that you can see at the bottom of your window, then select French. I'm going to explain that in French. Um, pour l'interprétation en français, veuillez cliquer sur le globe qui est euh, en bas de votre écran. Euh, vous verrez l'intitulé interprétation et puis euh, sélectionnez français. Uh, this session is recorded and will share the links to the video and presentation by email. Finally, you can ask your questions during the presentation using the Q&A box and um, the panelists will answer them after the presentation. Now, I'll give the floor to Claude Magdeburg, who will make uh, a quick uh, introductory um, speech. Thank you very much. Claude, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alex. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, colleagues, depending where you are based. Today, we have a pleasure to present to you the inventory and gap analysis tool. This tool is important for all the API uh, team on the improvement area to improve the, the area of supply chain, and particularly to make sure that equipment used at uh, MOH and particularly for API are recorded, the status is well known and we can track performance of this equipment. And tracking performance of equipment can also uh, make sure that the performance of the cold chain is also uh, uh, tracked through the system. Then today, it's an introduction of this tool for your attention, and we expect you to, to get on board and use this tool that WHO provides and make it available for all the country to use. This tool, you know, is uh, also very important actually because many of your countries received support during this COVID uh, pandemic and many equipment are actually available in country and many vaccines coming with different profile. And for this vaccine, we need also different type of equipment and we need to know what equipment we need for what purpose. This is why this tool is very important for us to be sure that what we are providing as support to country. We have all the equipment like tools and uh, 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 guidance to be sure that supply chain is well monitored. And today we will have Mustaba and Maricel to present this tool uh, for your attention. I will give the floor now to Maricel to make a a summary of the tool and after that we'll continue to the uh, platform uh, of uh, IGA. Thank you. Over to you, Maricel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claude. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone. So I will be presenting uh, a brief introduction of the WHO uh, Inventory and Gap Analysis Tool. Uh, the objective of this session actually is to summarize the potential of the IGA or um, of the tool, including its benefits for strengthening the supply chain in terms of maintaining updated equipment inventory and addressing the capacity and maintenance gaps. So after this presentation, we will give you the tour of the application to get you familiar with the different functions of EGA. So the inventory and gap analysis application uh, the, this is the first version, and it is uh, available both as a web and a mobile-based application. So as a web-based application, it is open source. It works in any micro, Microsoft-supported server, while the mobile-based application works in any Android-supported smartphones and tablets for data in entry. 
So we are uh, ho hopefully in the future, we will also be able to make this application available for, um, for Apple devices. Um, it is a live dynamic tool. It, the inventory of the equipment can be updated at any time. So it's not a one-shot inventory that you do like on a periodic basis, but it's a tool where you can use that every time there is a new equipment that is installed or renovated or decommissioned, you can immediately uh, update the inventory uh, and make the data entry uh, using the mobile platform. So therefore, it is cost-effective, it is efficient, and uh, another advantage is this can be translated to any languages in addition to the uh, UN official languages that are already built into the system. So it can be used by any health program, although we, we, uh, we, are, we made this tool uh, for immunization uh, supply chain equipment, but in fact, this can be applied or used for any equipment in any other health programs. So you can manage the inventory of any type and a class of equipment uh, using EGA. So um, there is an unlimited number of equipment or item class that can be included. It can be cold chain equipment, it can be temperature devices, it can be electrical or electronic devices, even, even, even uh, transportation vehicles or biomedical equipment can be uh, included in this inventory. The data is stored in a cloud server uh, and country has exclusive access to their data. So uh, if you are concerned about uh, ownership of data, this, this provides you that opportunity. So there are two levels of uh, use for the EGA application. First is the admin level and the other one is the user level. So for the admin level, this is mostly from, for the web-based platform. So the uh, admin have several functions, such as the setting up the, and configuration of the EGA for, for the country setting. And the data entry also is part of the uh, function, including the management of consolidated databases. And then, of course, uh, the admin has access to full reports. For the user level, uh, if the user the user level can, can the user can use either the web-based platform or the mobile platform. For the web-based platform, if you are at the user level, you can perform data entry and you have access to the full report. But if you're only using the mobile platform, you can do data entry and have a limited access to reports. So total there there, be, there are three reports that you can uh, access through the mobile platform. So I also put this uh, in the box, the, the access to the demo and the mobile application for, for this uh, tool. So uh, in terms of uh, the function on uh, admin arrangement or admin setup, the admin can do configuration of the application. Uh, the admin can perform selection of the fields, such as defining the equipment class or types. So the admin can set the required fields for each equipment type and define the optional and mandatory fields. The admin can also uh, perform the, adjust the security setting, assign the usernames and passwords for any user, and set the application language. So the admin can facilitate the translation of the application or adjusting the, the language if language customization is required. So it's possible to even translate this tool to your local uh, language. So admin can also perform uh, data entry. Uh, admin can connect to any facilities and perform data entry or editing or help the user complete data entry as needed, especially if, for example, there is a problem with internet and the user cannot perform the, the entry him, himself or herself, then the admin can, uh, can support. And then a large number of data fields are built into the application and admin determines which data fields will be required for the user's data entry. So there's a, there's a long list of data fields and uh, the admin should decide which is necessary for the country use. So this is part of the customization. And then um, for the web and the mobile-based application users level, so that, of course they can perform data entry, whether you're using web or mobile application, you can, the, the, the data entry is the same, it's standardized and for all levels. So it works both on PCs and smartphones, 
or tablets, but only at this time as mentioned, it works only on Android. So the data entry is pull through and it's very simple. There is no need for extensive training. The on-job training for three hours is enough uh, for the learner to be able to use the application, especially since the application can be translated into local languages. Um, there is also an online help available in case the, the user uh, finds some problem with the, with the data entry. And then it's a collaborative effort. As mentioned earlier, it is possible for the higher level user or admin to enter the data for their sub facilities if the sub facility has no internet connection or having some problem. So in terms of report, for the web-based application, the user level uh, can access the full reports. And this is the list. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, bullets, but just to give you an overview that about what what how how the report can be uh, aggregated or disaggregated, and there are twelve different full uh, twelve full different types of reports, uh, and with several filters. So you can see the uh, in the sub bullets the different types of filters that you can use. For the mobile-based application, there are three types of reports that are available. So the facility list, the item list, and the user list. So this is the limitation of the mobile app, but it's very uh, efficient for use for data entry. So these are the types of reports that can be generated uh, and the different filters that you can use uh, if you want to access the limited reports uh, in, through the mobile application. So there are also other functions built into the EGA. Uh, for example, there's a maintenance module and full logbook that provides date for each services done per equipment and warnings when specific types of maintenance work is required for each of the equipment. It also allows you to do facility segmentation. And uh, of course, it allows you to assess the cold chain capacity gap and plan for filling the cold chain gaps and replacement plan. It allows you to have a full communication system among the, the users of the, of the application. And then it allows importation of the facility data and PQS, pre-qualified um, data, equipment data from the MS Excel database. It's multilingual and can be translated into any local languages. So with, the, with this uh, EGA application, we uh, are hoping to support countries to make their in inventory more practical and efficient. So the initial investment is reasonable. So at this point, so thank you very much. At this point, I will now uh, hand over the floor to Machtaba to give you the tour of the EGA application. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Marisol. Now, I have you have to stop sharing your screen, and I have to share the screen. I suppose I did stop, so you can go ahead. Okay. Good. So, do you see my screen now? Or not? Not yet. It doesn't give me the. Oh, okay. While Mashtaba is uh, is uh, looking for the the the. the trying to share his screen. I see Alain is raising his hand. Alain, would you like to say something? Well, I don't find this. Uh, I share a screen, but yes. it doesn't give me the same. Uh, please, uh, Alexandre, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Alain. Uh, just uh, a question of uh, a participant. Oh, uh, we. I think we, we 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 will answer the questions after the presentation if it's if it's fine with you. So uh, yeah, Mustafa, we can see your screen now. Very good. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. No, this is the way that we just I mean enter the the application. If I become admin, I 
log in into the system as admin. They, you have seen this screen before by Maricel showed in her slide. This is the main page of the application that is seen by all the facilities, but all facilities, they don't see everything. They see only their own. For instance, here now I'm admin at the central store. So I can see here the uh, core chain equipment or I can select any item class and then the refrigerators. If I select, for instance, freezers, I will see that there are 90% of my freezers at this store is working. Uh, the total number is 11, only 90% are working. And for on the right side, this uh, diagram shows you that these are the facilities below you and how many of them has been uh, uh, defined, how many they are not defined yet. And here you see that for the maintenance that Maricel was talking about it. It shows you which of the equipment is the time for which kind of the maintenance service they have to do. And these are the facilities that they exist below the central store. So this is the main page. And then if I go, uh, because I logged in as admin, I can go to the setting. This setting is not seen by the users, only the admin group they have the possibility to see this. So this one is the configuration. So when you receive, when you decide to use this application, this, uh, these screens are all, I mean, um, I mean a blank and you have to fill it. For instance, if you put the name of the country, the code of the country, uh, the number of the levels or the currency that you want to use and the rest of the things coming down here you put more for each level what would be the required capacity at each uh, I mean a storage condition all these things you for instance for this example that is a replica of Jordan if I go to level two you see the minimum population is 6,000 put by admin six million is put by by admin again so the users when they put the data they have uh, the i mean error that they make is uh, curved by this kind of i mean information then all these things comes here and then in the admin level you go to the item class Maricel was talking about it, saying that you can select any item class that you want. For instance, we put for this cold chain equipment, temperature monitoring devices, electrical transport, auxiliary that can be computer and the printer. Uh, some countries, they put their biomedical equipment, medical equipment, and the other classes are left for them to decide if they want to put more. There is no in limitation in putting item classes there. Once the item classes are defined, admin goes to the item type and then select for each item class, they select the item types that they want. And then uh, if they don't want, I mean, to put some of them, they do not activate them. And if they want, they activate them and they can define whether this equipment has a PQS number or not PQS number. Once this is uh, done for all the equipment that admin decides to put in the system, admin can decide to put a, num a number of different items in the system or some of them may not be, I mean, important to them, so they don't put them there. Once the item is selected, then we go to the uh, item type in different levels. For instance, it says cold room, cold chain equipment, cold room only exists in level one. So the users, they cannot put a cold room by mistake in level two or level three. Fields related to the item. For each item that they defined, for instance, for the cold room, these are the kind of the fields that we suggest, but still the admin can decide which one they want or they don't want. Once they select an item, for instance, for cold room, they will say manufacturer. This country decided that they need to know the 
manufacturer of the cold room and is a mandatory, um, I mean, information. If you leave that, it's not mandatory, but if it's then mandatory, it means when the users, they're going to, to do the data entry and put the code room there, if they don't put the manufacturer that they don't select the manufacturer from the list, they will not be able to save the screen. The rest, physical fields, and then condition fields, and then a specific fields to cold chain, um, equipment, electrical fields, financial fields, different codes, PQS code, which one want to have, and for dry store is a bit different. Other additional, you see that is other field one, two, three, four, five. So if there are some fields that some country they need to use and is not in this system, they can select from the other fields. Once the field is finished, then they go to uh, fast, uh, fields uh, related to the facilities. Facility fields also, there is something like 40 fields we suggested, but still the admin can decide, uh, can I mean, add fields into them. Again, the same as item, admin can decide whether they want to know the vaccination coverage of the facility, yes. But is mandatory? No. So means that if the user, they don't know the coverage, they don't do If the admin decides that they have to know and they have to find always the coverage to make it mandatory. Once the, all these uh, fields uh, for facility and item is finished, then we go to parameters. In parameters, for some of the fields, because we do not want, and I'm sure you agree with me that the user should not type anything, they have to select. So for instance, here for facility type, in this country, they decide that the facility types are a vaccine store, national hospital, referral hospital, comprehensive, and so on and on. So the user can only select from the uh, uh, Dropbox menu. So again, the admin puts all these uh, parameters in the system. Manufacturers is again put by the admin. So the users, they have only to select the manufacturers and then uh, maintenance setting, uh, we don't have time to discuss it now, later or maybe if there's it, for PQS the same. PQS, you can, uh, the admin can always import all the PQS information into the system. And I will show you in a few seconds that how PQS is going to help that. Uh, facilities can also, you can do it one by one, but you can also have facility, I mean, information on the Excel sheet and, I mean, import all the data of the facility or some of the data of the facility to the system without typing one by one. Help is there, which I will show you later. Uh, edit language, uh, Maricel, I think, uh, explained enough. And then let me stop here as admin and go to the user level. For instance, if I am a user now, and I go here to item, new item. So this is, I'm in the central store and I can select the item class, cold chain. I select a refrigerator and then I came here and this system is going, as soon as I save the item, there would be a code generated by the system, a unique code, and will be there for that item. So each item, they have a unique code. And this code is translated into QR code. And then you can also take a photo of the QR code and all the information regarding that specific um, item will come on your screen. For instance, if I say this is the refrigerator and this is a PQS, is from the PQS, I type here PQS and I see all the list is coming in front of me. I select one of them. For instance, I select one of the PQS from this one, let's say, and then load. 
So for this one, I don't have to do the data entry because all the data entry that I wanted is here. The model coming, the PQS type is coming, manufacturer is here, PQ, uh, refrigerant gas is coming. Uh, all this information that I needed is coming, but I have to put here some of the thing that does not exist in there if I want. And also if I have a serial number for myself, which is not the same as the code developed by IGA, it, uh, I can put it there. And then uh, maybe here there is something that I didn't know, for instance, year installed, because PQS cannot tell me which year this was installed, so I can select the year that installed. And if I select this year, then the age of the, I mean, equipment can be determined by the, by IG. Uh, I think I have to go now to the report here because this is the data entry I show you somehow. Uh, that's why Maricel was saying that for the users, the training would be only something like, I mean, three hours for each user to use it. And then when we come uh, to the report, there are 12 main reports here. One of them is the gap report. If you just, I mean, allow me to go a few minutes to the gap report. For instance, if I select uh, level two and then report, see what do I get for this uh, example country. Although this is called example, but this is the replica of a Jordan. Uh, so you see, this is for two to eight degrees C gap. These are all facilities below the central store. So it shows here, uh, for instance, this one is Ajlun Governorate Store. The parent is central store, means that they collect the vaccine from the central store. This is the unique code generated by the application. Level is two type is vaccine store, general population, under one population. This is the net available capacity at two to eight degrees is 12,294 liter at this facility. Net available capacity functioning because it may not be the same. Maybe you have that, but uh, some of them are not functioning. In this case, both of them are the same. In the second case, it's not the same. Some of them are not working. And this is a net required capacity that you need for this uh, uh, governor at the store. And this shows this is the excess of the capacity at two to eight degrees. The second one is the uh, shortage and so on is going on. So that's one of the reports that you have. It's very similar to that sizing tool that it was in Excel sheet. But, uh, but the Excel sheet can, could not be updated every day, but this can be changed any second because if one of the refrigerators is not working somewhere and the users, they just remove it because it's not working. So this number will change. Once you have this uh, report, you can save it. And then there is another function in this system, exactly the same as a sizing tool that you can uh, select correct equipment for that uh, for that shortage and then uh, reach the gap. This is one of the reports, but this can be changed for uh, for minus 20, as I mean, uh, Claude was saying, uh, now that we have COVID-19 uh, vaccine against COVID-19, you can select minus 70 and so on. All these can be, I mean, exported to uh, to Excel. That was one of the reports. There are some other reports that, of course, I cannot go to all the reports now, but uh, to some of them, uh, for instance, if I go to the report, uh, for instance, facility map based report, again, I select level two, and report, here it gives me the map of all the facilities at level two. 
The same report can be generated for the facilities at level two when they have only shortage. These are all the facilities at level two. But if I change to the other report, I may see only few of them that they have a shortage. So that's the map report. What else I wanted to tell you? Uh, I think I would stop here and give more time to our friends to ask questions, except that there is one possibility also here that you can uh, export all data without touching them, without categorizing them. You can, I mean, export them to the Excel sheet. And once you, um, I mean, export them to the Excel sheet, you can do all the, I mean, analysis that does not exist in IGA or uh, reports that would you would like to obtain and they don't exist in IGA, you can use it from the planning. I showed, I, I talked about it a little bit. Once you have the gap, the same as sizing tool, you can select the right, uh, uh, I mean, equipment for that. I think I would, I would stop here. Maricel also said that this uh, data entry and uh, few, I mean, report exists also on the mobile application. All mobile application and everything is written here, can be downloaded the mobile application and uh, you can have the app and your mobile. I would stop here and back to you, Alex or uh, or Claude to see what will be the next. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mustafa. This is this is an excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, I think this is the time for questions to be answered. Uh, I see uh, lots uh, a lot of questions. I will give the floor to Alain to moderate these questions and uh, ask the panelists to answer those questions. Alain, the floor is yours. Uh, Alex, before that, yes. can I just say mm -hmm. something? Sure, of course. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, so thank you. So thank you much, Taba. So for the audience, uh, I, I just wanted to highlight that uh, this is just an or orientation. So we actually would wanted to take the opportunity of this webin re webinar that you are with us to understand uh, about your interest on this tool because um, we can uh, we can with this limited time for the webinar we cannot show you all the functionalities of the of the tool. Um, so that you can really fully understand the benefits and how how advantageous this would be in managing your uh, supply chain inventory uh, of equipment, as well as how this can help you in uh, in um, uh, providing input data for the for the plan that you need to do. For example, if you're applying for CCOP or you know. Uh, uh, if you're submitting proposal for any grant opportunity where the inventory data is necessary so this can be very helpful as well and also uh, uh, for maintaining the equipment because the uh, in in the future in the next version of this tool and it's going to be very soon we will be releasing the functionality for maintenance so that um, your maintenance plan can be uh, sort of built into the tool already. There will be uh, uh, there will be some notifications for you to be reminded of maintenance works that are necessary uh, for the different types of services. So this is the advantage. This is also the advantage of the tool. And if you're really interested, I, I believe um, Alex shared uh, through the invitation a survey. Uh, and we are really uh, encouraging you to fill up that survey because through that survey, we will be able to know which countries are seriously uh, considering to introduce the use of EGA in their country. So we can uh, coordinate uh, the Afro, Afro office will coordinate with you so that we can, we can uh, sort of schedule uh, the, the TA that we will be providing so that to, to help you in installing the application as well as the training of the necessary staff that, that will be involved in the use of the tool. So I just want to highlight that and we hope that you will be completing the survey so that you give us an idea 
about uh, how we can effectively support you uh, once you decided to use this tool. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot for this reminder. Um, so Ala, the floor is yours now. Hey, thank you, uh, uh, Alexandre. Uh, thank you to Maricel and uh, Mojaba. I have recorded uh, some questions on the on the QA. Uh, the first one, uh, the participant want, wanted to know if uh, they will have the link after the, the presentation so that they can do the test. Uh, another one uh, want to know our which level uh, data are increased. Uh, can participants allow it to have an account in this IJA tool or only concrete that implemented the tool? And uh, the next question from Salma, can the PQS code format be amended to align with standard item catalog codes? And uh, he also want to know if there is a standard format for the Excel sheet to be imported in import PQS sheet. And uh, I think let's start with the with the first question. Okay. So okay. can you repeat the first question? Yes, the first question is the uh, let me let me see. Uh, the first question is can the link the, uh, be shared after this uh, presentation so that the participant can do test can do the test. That's the first question. From uh, Marius. Uh, yes, the link will be shared with you and including the presentation that I shared where uh, the, the link is there as well, but we can also put the link. Uh, I think I can, we can even put it in the chat box right now. So let me just do that. You can also use Hello, the, 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 that's right. I mean, the link also is advertised uh, here. Hello? Hello? Yeah. yeah, I think I think we'll share the we'll share the link. Uh, we we'll share the link by email. Um, I think there's a question about the username and password. Um, is it also something that can be shared? Sure. Yes. I mean, uh, the username and password was shown also by by myself when she was doing the presentation. There is one username is admin and password is simply one two three for everyone to use. Okay, great. Well, this admin in one, two, three. In any case, this will be shared again by email. Um, thank you, Anna. Okay. Next question is: uh, uh, Which who can be the the administrator at the the country level? Okay, can I reply to that? Yes, go ahead. Okay, administration is. Uh, I mean, group of three to four people, depending on the size of the country, of the uh, of those that they know the supply chain very well, they know the cold chain very well, they know, I mean, the program very well. So they are selected by the EPI manager for this uh, to be the uh, admin group. There must be more than two people because if one of them is not, is on leave or not there, so two of them, they should be there, and again, the number. So this admin group would be, I mean, trained to use this system, and uh, the training for the admin, contrary to what uh, is the for the users, is something like uh, 20 hours of, <clears throat> of training required for the admin, which is also, I mean, include the configuration of the system. It's not just the training to say this is uh, that works like that and so on. So the admin, they will be, I mean, trained at the same time they configure uh, the application to their needs. 
I reply to that, to the question. Thank you. I think I think this is this is fine. Um, Anna. Okay. Uh, another participant uh, wanted to know uh, if uh, uh, a participant the, the, a participant can are allowed to have an account in this IGE tool or only concrete that implemented uh, the tool. Well, I did not get exactly that, but uh, once the country they decide to use this, uh, the admin starts to give a username and password to the persons, to the, to the staff that they want. And each staff that has the access to the system can give a username and password to a lower level. And then also they can decide what kind of, I mean, authorities this user can. User can do everything or user can only see the report or user can only do the data entry. So all these things exist in the system. Okay. The next question. Maybe, maybe Mustaba, if uh, uh, I understand the question of Alain uh, from the participant, it means that uh, an independent user cannot get access to uh, a platform unless if you use the the uh, the testing version or the but not the, so the data from, from a demo. particular country is it that so you're, talking about, so you're talking about the demo site you're talking about the demo site or you're talking about when when i mean actually the country decide to use that which one no, I think the demo for the demo, it's open for everyone. So for the, demo, the data from the okay. particular country, it means that the country should give access only the country. No, for when you are using it in one country, let's say Benin <laughs> or Uganda or uh, Mozambique, they have only they have their own server. So the other countries, they don't have access to that. And each user is assigned to one facility and he or she has only access to that facility. Only the admin group, they have access to all the facilities. For instance, if you are in a country at the provincial I mean, level, you have access to all the facility, all the district and facilities that belongs to this district. And the district, they have only access to the centers that they are belonging to that district. And if you are in the lowest level, you have access only to your own facility. Okay, thanks. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, the, the next question is uh, the, the participant wanted to know if the AQS code format uh, can be amended to align with standard item cataloged codes. And if there is a standard format for the Excel sheet to be imported in an import PQS. Definitely, definitely there is a standard format because computer is a stupid, cannot accept everything, every format. So the format is a standard and you can uh, and this for, uh, and this information is already uh, loaded into the system for you. When you are doing a new, can you see the screen now? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, if I type here PQS, I see all. But if I go to a country, I don't want to see all this long list. So. The admin group, they know they have only four of them or five or six or a limited number of PQS. So they're going to remove, they're going to the Excel sheet, they delete everything and they keep only six. So then when they use this, they just type here PQS, they see only six numbers here. Because admin knows that uh, there is only six type of PQS type of, uh, I mean, refrigerator in this uh, supply chain. But the same thing you can, if you know you have domestic 
So mostly refrigerators in your system with all the information, and you know the number is very big, you bought Zanossi 200. So you can add Zanossi type of things into the Excel sheet of the PQS as well and give a fictitious number, which is not a PQS, it's another number. You can give it to that. And once the user, they reach that and they see that Zanussi model M56 is there, they don't have to type anything. They just select a number the same as the PQS. Definitely the answer to your question is that it must be a very, very, very rigid and standard, uh, I mean, Excel sheet format. Okay. Back to you. Ella. Go ahead, Ella. Okay. Uh, the next question. Uh, the participant wanted to know uh, whether uh, if <coughs> a user in, uh, has entered data at a lower level, uh, can it be possible for the administrator to know uh, what uh, has been added at this level? Yes, administrator can know all the things because they have access to all the facilities. They log in into the facility, if I can show you, here, for instance, if I go to facility as an administrator facility list, and I can see all the facilities here. I click here, you see all the facilities below this facility. And then I go to one of these facilities. Again, I go below to this facility and I see all the facilities below and I go below, below until I can go to the last uh, level and see that what happened or help them to add a new, I mean, equipment or to delete, uh, I mean, equipment and to help them to do the things. Yes, because admin can do. But apart from, I mean, from admin, each higher level, they have access to the lower level. And then the lower level have access to the lower level until the last level. Back to you. Okay. <clears throat> What steps should be taken by countries to access IGA? All right, that's a very good question. <clears throat> I think you, you are in a better position to reply to that, but let me say, and then you complete. First step is that you have to decide whether IGA is, I mean, answering your needs. Once you do that, then you, ask WHO or UNICEF office to help you. Maybe if you don't want, you can also directly, I mean, ask us, but the best is that you ask WHO or UNICEF because this belongs to WHO, this one. And then we, uh, you decide whether you want to have it directly on your own server, uh, Ministry of Server, uh, Ministry of Health server, or you want to have it on a, a shared server. You can have it on a shared server first, and then you move to your own, uh, your own dedicated server. Once uh, the server is ready for you, IGA empty, a blank would be loaded for you by myself and my team. And then we do a training for you from distance, so far we have done it because of the COVID. We have done the training from distance, four days of four hours for the admin group. You decide who are the admin group. Admin group, they participate in our training because we do not speak all the languages of the region. The admin group should, uh, should speak English at this stage. And then we train the admin group at the same time, as I said before, uh, configure the application for you. The application is configured at the end of the four days uh, training of four hours each day. And then you have to train. The admin group's job is to train the users. We help them also in some of the training cases. And 
the uh, then you have to decide whether you want to send the teams to all the facilities to do the data entry or you want to ask the district to be responsible for that since the district they have access to the facilities uh, that belongs to them so um, either you decide to send a team to collect the data and to do data entry or you just assign the district to do the data entry for their uh, for the facilities. For instance, for facility at the lower level is very easy because facility, they have one refrigerator, two cold boxes, and one vaccine carrier. That said, it's not a big deal. They don't have a uh, cold room. They don't have uh, refrigerated vehicle. They don't, they may not have uh, uh, cars. They don't, they may not have, have uh, motorcycle. But when you come to the higher level, becomes a little bit more difficult because the number of equipment is bigger, the type of the equipment is larger, they have cold room, cold room, they have more fields than the refrigerators. So that would be the training for the users at the lower level. So basically, yeah, uh, one, you have to decide, two, we have, you have to decide on the server, and then third is the uh, training for the admin group and then the training for the users. Definitely this is all cost and you have to think about um, because the training costs not really the application is free. We don't, uh, nobody charges you for the application, but the trainings, calling the people to come to the training if it's not, I mean, from this time. For the larger country, we suggest that we have the training face-to-face, uh, -to -face. for instance, I mean, Nigeria, maybe we have to divide it into two countries, uh, divide it into two, uh, north and south, and do that. Or for that I mean, reason, the Philippines cannot be done, the training from distance. But for a smaller country, probably so far, we have done all the training from distance. Back to you. Okay, next, uh, next question. Amongst the the report that the tool the, the tool produces, is there a, a cold chain uh, rehabilitation plan? Yes. Uh, once you have this report of the gap on a gap, when you find the gap, I showed you the report. You save it, and then when you save it, you come here. And you see there are other uh, admin can do that, not the users. Admin can come to the setting and select this, uh, the gap report and the planning comes up. Is exactly the same as the uh, sizing tool. So you can select, you can put, the type of the equipment that you want into this system, you say, okay, I only, I can, I would like to have two types of, the same as sizing two, two types of solar refrigerators and two models of refrigerator, one freezer. So you put them there and then based on the gap that is saved there, you select the number of equipment you need and the costing is coming up and the report is coming up and also a, uh, uh, deployment plan will come up somehow. Back to you. Okay. Um, can update be carried out in on offline mode? No. Next question. I mean, the answer is okay. you no. Know. Will there be a dedicated support from double H to customize or resolve user related issues on this tool? Say it again, please. Sorry, it was disconnected. Yes, will there be a dedicated support from double H to customize or resolve user related issues on the tool? If I understood the question well, that uh, this uh, this application is already, as I showed you, is configurable by hundred percent. So 
we hardly think that there is a need for any uh, change in the system, except that really in the field, we find out that something is missing and we have to add to it because it has been already tested in five countries and all the problems that uh, that exist, all the field did not have in the system, it has been added with that. I would not exclude the fact that it may come up in one country we go, we see that something is missing. Yes, this can be done. But support of what, what kind of more support do you have in your mind? What kind of, of support do you have in your mind that WHO can give you? I think this also should be replied by WHO. Hello? Yeah, that's a question probably for, for, for Marisa. Marisa, what kind of support do you think yeah. should be useful? Sorry, uh, can you say, can you repeat the question, please? I'm uh, responding on the chat. So Mostaba was was wondering what kind of support uh, could be uh, could be could be useful. Mostaba, can you perhaps repeat the, your question? Yes, uh, the question I understood. They said, what kind of support WHO can give to the country if they decide to use IG? This is, I think, the question. Is that right, Alan? Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay, so so, so first of all. Um, we have already a, a standing support for the server. So this is the shared server that that Mochtaba is mentioning. So we are um, we can provide you with a server to host the data, but you will have the full access to your own data, um, and you have the ownership of that data even if it's in the shared shared server. Nobody else can access that unless you permit to do so. So the second support that we're doing is building the regional capacity for rolling out of the AGA. So I, I think Claude will, you will hear more from Claude, but we are actually planning for a trainer's training um, uh, in quarter three, so that we can have more local support available in Afro region for countries that will be using the AGA. So for the meantime, since we have not done the training yet, so we have much Taba and Mohammed who are consultants and developers that are currently providing the TA. So we have a standing contract so that they can be available 24-7 uh, in case you have some issues, bug fixing or whatever uh, clarification on the use of the tool. So you can reach out to them or you can also contact me or Solo Kone uh, from the headquarters if you have further uh, question. Now for the training, uh, we can provide the TA for, for, for the training uh, if you want to, to already uh, scale up the use of IGA in your country. Uh, we can also uh, provide uh, support on that. That's why we really want to uh, do encourage you to, to answer the survey because this will really make us understand what will be the workload for Afro because IGA is not only being rolled out in Afro, but it's also uh, already running in PAHO, EURO, and um, SHARO. Uh, uh, regions. So, so we are really um, uh, expecting to, to be in full full gear, uh, especially uh, next year when we expect more countries to we will be using. So, um, so currently these are the available support uh, that we that we have. But if you have any specific support uh, that that you think is very critical and WHO. Uh, headquarters or regional office would require intervention, uh, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maricel. I think um, we're, we've, we just passed one o'clock here in, uh, in Geneva. Uh, we probably need to wrap up this, uh, this webinar session. Um, maybe, maybe there's one last question. Uh, that I was wondering, uh, and Nada and Nasir was were, were were asking the same question. Basically, um, basically, in if they decide to use this tool in in their country, what are the steps they they should follow? Uh, who to, who they should they contact? The WHO country office, or 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 what is the the what are the steps? Maricel. Uh, for the meantime, the main contact should be the regional office. 
we uh, because uh, we, we are still in the process of you know making people aware of that this tool is existing uh, even at the country level so uh, but but our regional uh, counterparts are already aware and uh, we are already co uh, we are actually in the process of coordinating with them on how we can uh, start building the regional capacity for country support okay thank you i think we really need to wrap up this session now um, unless anyone would like to add the last word, Maricel, Moshtaba, anyone else? Claude, Mohamed? Yeah, maybe Claude, do you have last words? I think uh, just to thank all the participants and the panelists for uh, your active uh, uh, engagement during this, uh, this session. And we are expecting all the participants to respond to the the survey, the link was shared with you by Maricel, respond and uh, also uh, confirm your interest to, to use this tool. And then uh, Afro will uh, work on uh, the support closely with your country to see what will be the next step once we receive your uh, interest of uh, uh, rolling out the, the tool in your country. Thank you, Alex, for organizing this uh, session. Thanks again to the participants. And uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, to your countries for uh, an implementation of uh, this uh, inventory gap analysis tool. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Uh, maybe just one last comment uh, for Maricel. Um, there's a francophone uh, participant, Ilyasa, who's asking if it's possible to have the, the survey in French. Um, maybe we can see if it's a possibility. Maricel, I can translate that into French and maybe we can share by email uh, for francophones to, to answer properly, like to make sure they, they understand well. Is it something that we can do? Marisol? Yes, please, please. I think that's very helpful. Okay, let's discuss that later. We will, we will get back to you anyway, uh, to all participants. We will get back to you by email. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank all the panelists. Um, uh, I would like to thank our interpreter, uh, Morgan, and I wish you all a very nice uh, day and uh, we'll be in touch. I will send you an email. I will send you an email to, the, um, to, to share the recording, the link to the video and the link to the presentation and the link to the survey just as a reminder. Thank you very much and have a very, very beautiful day, everyone. Bye. Thank you.